Um, a very good conversation, I think, was very productive. You know, um, some people have um, a skosh more access to me than others. And um, every once in a while, we I get in some pretty, you know, some pretty serious conversations with uh, with friends. And what I learn from this individual. was it was was amazing because we we had similar beginnings we had similar talks about exactly what's it what does it mean to be um what is it what it means to be How do I put this? What it what it means to be I don't wanna say I don't wanna say successful. Uh, but in Bay, uh, it's all right, bro. You're here now. <clears throat> I don't want to say successful. You know. But I will say um, pretty much successful. And this person watched me for a number of uh, years before... They actually jumped off the porch and start doing what it is that we do, which is, you know, a freight relocation engineer, <laughs> you know. And one thing he, he brought up to me is, have I ever thought of the... complete shock of how good you actually did. Do you sit around? I probably said your name wrong, bro. But do you sit around and really think about how good you actually did compared to when you where you started from and i was like well i mean you're going to have to honestly you're going to have to break that down for me so a little bit more and since we got time to burn miles today i mean i'm even early so yeah Thank God to, um, you know, thank, thank, thank God to the truck messing up this week. But he's, he wants to know, did you, did you actually take time to really, really think about that? No problem, Mr. Fish. Appreciate the love. And I told him, I was like, I don't, I don't know. And I, I even posed the question is, is that arrogant? You know, just a, a, a real question. Do you, do you think that is, you know, an arrogant thought? And I said, mm, no. 
how would you know where you're going if you're not thinking? You know, if you're not thinking of, is this a good decision or not, A, B, C, D, F, G. If you're not thinking of that, how will you know if you're going in the appropriate direction? He says, the reason why I bring this up is because he said he went home and he was saddened by how bad the average American or or, or, or or person in his family is doing. And I was like, you know, what do you what do you consider bad? And he's just, you know, just basically how what it ended up being was basically how how poor I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't set this up before I started, so let me get this. Let me get this up. How poor the average, you know, person is actually doing. And I I told him, well, how how good should they be doing? If you really think about it. And he was saying he went home and he, he the, the pe- his people just had no understanding of 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 making more than about $35,000. And I was like, well, for where you live, I'm not going to say where he lives, but you know, think think Arkansas. And I don't mean Little Rock, I mean backwood one family dollar type of Arkansas. And he was like, you know, they had conversations about money and they were ending up with just a few dollars every week. And it was to the point they were used to it. And he didn't even want to tell them, like, like, dude, I'm making four times what you're making. And he contributed that success to watching me early on. And I was like, yeah, that's fine, but, you know, you did the work. But what's interesting about that is that not only do they not think of it, us as drivers don't think of it. Because I've, I've, I've spent a considerable amount of time just thinking about how our how our self esteem could be so low and why it is so low how how could that be i just didn't understand like what mind trick was done to make us feel that bad about ourselves if most of the country is doing considerably worse than you. And I said, well, maybe people don't know that the the rest of the country is doing worse than them. When you're living in your own bubble, you're not, you know, you're not thinking of it, bro. You just, you just, you just living, bro. Like, you know, you, you're not thinking of if you're not thinking of if uh, how good you're doing compared you're not thinking of that you're just thinking i'm suffering through my day you know i don't get to be home you know nobody you know Nobody in the uh, popular social media saying I am a good choice to date. You just think bad about yourself most of the time. And the truth is, dude, and I, I don't know how to say this to you. I don't know how to say this to you. Because I don't want you to take this the wrong way as a, you know, as a driver. And I don't know if anyone in your 
current circle is telling you this. But I feel like y'all need to hear it. You're out here driving the truck. You're on time. You're making the money you're okay with making. You know, you went from you went from not having a car to having a car. You went to barely making your car note to not even thinking about sliding the money over. You know, you're you're building your credit up now, you know. You you have income confidence. You, as a truck driver, and I want you to listen to me right now. This is for everybody. It don't matter if you're local, regional. It don't matter none of that. You as a CDL holder, you are killing it, bro. You're killing it, man. You're killing it. Freddie, I get it. You're killing it. Like, you are winning. And I feel like we need to, we need to take that in for a second. You're winning. Think about the last time you bought a computer. And you just said, when I go home, I'm going to buy a computer. And you just bought it cash. You just bought it cash. You just went in there, $2,000 and bought it. See, most people are buying computers cash, man. And even that thought, even that thought, like think of that. The people who are going in there and buying computers, they're financing them. You don't even think about it. You're killing it right now. And no one ever comes to us and tells us that, hey, man, you're rocking it, man. You're you're, you're really doing good. You're really doing good right now. You're getting above, if your company, you're getting above average benefits, right? If you're owner op, you can buy your own benefits. But you are seeing more money than most of the country is seeing, with or without a, with or without a, a, a um, a degree. So you need to. You have no reason to sit back and say, I'm not doing well or I'm unhappy with where I'm at. Because we believe getting to a place of success, there's going to be a ceremony. That's why you never know when you hit it. Because certain fields, there's an actual ceremony, you know. There's an actual ceremony. You know, if you, when you reach the pinnacle of being an actor, you get an Oscar. Pinnacle of being in the NFL, you get a Heisman Trophy. Right? You get MVP award, James Beard award if you're a chef. You know, you get, you get stuff. You're a scientist, you get a Nobel Prize. Things like that. But if you're in a field that doesn't have any of that stuff, you just never know when you can consider yourself successful. You just don't know. You just, maybe I'm, I need to keep going. You done bought the car. You done got the money in your pocket. You got the savings. You got the credit. And you still don't know if you're successful or not. It's like you, it's always a question mark. It's always a question mark. And is that on purpose?
And it, you know, is, is that on purpose? Now, in these fields, we don't know why those things are in place. We don't know why, who put that in place for them people to reach for that. But when you're in a, uh, a, a thankless job or a job that never has an end to it as we do, you kind of have to have a, you got to have to have a self-worth check of your own. You have to know who you are. Because if no one's sitting there telling you you're doing great, we end up falling to the point of not thinking we're doing great. That's the truth. We fall to the point where we don't think we're doing great. ABA, you're the only one to hit the catch. I appreciate the love, playboy. I do. I appreciate what I do. You, you, you just don't never, you just, I guess you just, we just never feel like we made it. Ever. You never talk to someone who does what we do and they don't never feel like they've made it all the way to the end. And maybe they don't give us these rewards because you would stop. You would flow. Oh, I made it. But then if you hear it's never enough says, if you need someone to, to tell you, then you don't know who you are. That's a, that's a good point. You don't know who you are, but we can't deny that it doesn't feel good. We can't deny that. But at the same time, you know, no one's going to be there patting you on the back in this game. But I feel since there is a bunch of slots that are, if there's a, when you look at the jobs that society likes or covets, and everybody runs to those jobs, and then people find out that you can't just slide into that job. And then they take this as a backup. Those are the type of people that are coming in after the other thing didn't work. They're coming in after the other thing didn't work. So now you have a bunch of people who really have the personality. You know, they have the personality of that because they tried it and it didn't work. But now they're here and expecting to see or feel the same markers. And here you don't get that. You're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. That's why I always separate a distinction between the people who were successful before they came to trucking and the people who came to trucking originally for without this was their thing they wanted to do. I always separate those two people. And just not to be ignorant, it's just, I, I just feel, and this is maybe weird, the people who did stuff before trucking, they seem to expect a better treatment than we get. And the people who, this was their thing they were going to do from jump. I feel like we have a little bit of a better respect for the for the actual lifestyle. I could be wrong. Appreciate you, Maurice. I would say things to, you know, my old lady who was collegiate, you know, who is, degrees and, 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 and C-suite level past and and you know sometimes we get into conversations and she says I don't know why y'all deal with it and I tell her you know the majority of us deal with it because this was our thing this wasn't your this wasn't your thing this wasn't your thing you, you know you you know it just wasn't you know, what I mean, I, I I thought being a trucker was the shit. And 
you other people who did something before trucking thought that thing you did before trucking was the shit, and then you did trucking as a happenstance. That's not the to me. I don't think that's the same thing. And I could I could be wrong. I don't I don't think that's the same thing. If you wanted to do this, you would have did it first, I believe. You would have did it first. So when you come through and then you come in not understanding that you're going to lose your social standing. I don't think a lot of people know they're going to get that's going to happen to them. They believe, well, you know, I, I got a degree and that don't mean nothing here. It doesn't. It doesn't mean anything. Here. Not in your social standing. Freddie Logos, I see you. Not in, not here because here you have no social standing. Chris Bain, I see you. And I believe that those people who got had a college degree, went into another field for five, six years, ten years first, and then eventually find training, I think they are offended by the way they're treated. And it ends up, you know, it ends up affecting them and they stay they, they feel like it ain't for them. They feel like ah, it's not for them. This isn't for me. You know, and, and really the thing they're unhappy with it is not necessarily the job. They're unhappy with where the job has placed them socially, I think. That's why they're unhappy with it. They feel like that's why that's why I always touch on the self esteem thing. They just feel like you know, they fell from grace. And socially, you did. You did. And I ain't going to say they soft or anything like that. I'm just going to say you're expecting something that we don't expect. Appreciate that, Maurice. But remember, we send that there. Corporate takes 50%. That's why we use the cash app. Appreciate the love. And it's just one of them things I don't think people really talk about because I don't think we're really, um, we're not class or socially trained anyway. If anything, America tries to act like there is no class. We're all just together on the surface. They act that way. But then when you go to a higher class neighborhood, you find that there are gates there and gates are the physical separation of class. You know, and that, that you know, okay, that's that's cool, Dre. I hear you. What was your degree in? I just, I just always like to to look at those those angles because. I don't I don't feel we don't look at them enough. Because some things we don't even understand what we're mad about. You're making a ton of money. You're making decent money. You're you you don't have to have bills. You're not held down to one state. You can go anywhere you want. Even if you're a local driver, you have the foundation to go not be local. And vice versa. So you have those opportunities to go anywhere you want, to move anywhere you want, and afford it. How can we then still be angry when you're killing it right now? You're like, I just want y'all to just conceptualize that. I want y'all to sit back and think about that. Like, I, I'm successful. I feel I'm doing good. I just need y'all to, to take that in, bro. I'm do, you, you need to every once in a while you need to tell yourself that you're doing good because you'll never think you are 
you'll just think that I'm sucking right now. And it's like, why do you think you're sucking? Why does one type of person get in the truck and, 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 and uh, feel good about it and the other one doesn't? Why? One section of our society, you know, they're considered like rebels. You know, they wear the freaking American flag bandana and they're okay with what they're doing. They think like they made it and the other feels like they feel like trash. And it's like, that's sad to me. Because if you were to go back and have conversations with your auntie that drives a school bus and have conversations with your auntie that works at that processing plant, or the one that works that's a that's a uh, you know that's an administrator at some random business or the one that works at some desk at some random call center if you were to look at what they have to live on you would feel better about yourself you would feel way better about yourself i really feel that way to know that these these people are not really making much i mean i've looked at the job market and people really don't offer that much more over twenty dollars an hour. They don't, unless you start sliding over into in, into trades. You start sliding over into trades, then you start seeing higher payment. Start sliding over into CDL welder type, you know. CDL, welder, plumber, electrician, then it goes up. Then it goes up. You know, and, and, and the other jobs that, that pay the crazy money, they're on LinkedIn somewhere and you don't have the connections to get to them. Like they're, they're not on Indeed for real. So it's like, you just, I mean, just look at it. Just look at, just type in, go to your phone and the, and type in random, random office job. It, dude, they're paying like twenty one dollars an hour, twenty two dollars an hour, and if they're paying more, they're in a city where that doesn't matter. But type in like crane operator. Just type that in to Indeed Crane Operator and see what it tells you. See what it tells you. Look at the difference between the person who works in the office as a random administrator of something and then look at what a a crane operator makes. Yeah, but are you in construction with no trade, Dominique Cross? Because when you're in construction with no trade, you're a laborer. That's that's more of the thought process I'm trying to get over to you. It's like, you're really winning. You're really freaking winning, though. You're, you're killing it. You're killing it. When you look at it, these people, they don't make no money, man. Just go to your folks at home. They're not making no money. Yeah, and then you work for the city, right? But if you were to take that same, uh, if you were to take that same Dominique, that uh, willingness to work outside and apply it to getting a welder apprenticeship, which is in your city, there's unions right there. Yeah, Connecticut is 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 a classically expensive place to live. So twenty eight dollars an hour is like nineteen dollars an hour in Mississippi. Like it's it's it's, it's adjusted, so it's the same money. 
So if you would think, all right, I don't, Dominique was the thing. I don't mind working outside. I'm going to go find a apprenticeship. You could take that same willingness to be outside and get a crane operator apprenticeship. Dominique, you can get a welder's apprenticeship, a plumber's apprenticeship, an electric apprenticeship, any of those. And you would quadruple your money. In the in literal sense, like you would make way more money. But if you're just going to go and just be a laborer somewhere and hope they let you get on the forklift one day or hope they let you get on the bulldozer one day, you're going to take 10 years to get somewhere you could have gotten six months. That's that's just a fact, bro. You know, and even like even CDL drivers can get their crane operator. Uh, there's crane operator positions from a CDL standpoint that you could do. But I like I said, I don't think we, I don't think we sit back and really, really think like, oh my God, I'm killing it. I'm killing it. Like these people have to work seven years at their job to see sixty thousand dollars, and then and when they're getting like sixty five thousand dollars, they're the top person at their job. Probably not in the company, but where they work at that building, they're like the top guy. That is insane. You know how long you been working here? Twelve years. You add up their, you know, you're you're getting twenty, and you add up their twenty six, no overtime, dude. They're not making a lot of money. You're like, God, well, what do you do? Oh, well, I'm a director over something, something that means nothing, or whatever. And you look into it, and you know, even if you know, they say, I see you, Jew. You know, they say, Yeah, I'm making. 60, 70, but it's like, dude, you made that first year with CEO. First year walking in the door. And they had to stay 10, 12 years, three, four promotions to finally get to that money. We're killing it, dude. We're killing it. And we just we just need to we need to to I don't know how to explain it, but we just need to sit back and look at ourselves and say we're doing good. We're doing all right, man. We're not doing bad at all. And I think that needs to be talked about. Even when I did the video before where I was the, the young guy was talking about, oh, this is not to be done for a long period of time. And I always ask people, well, what should be done for a long period of time? What should be done a long period of time? Well, not this, but you're saying not this as if you know there is an alternative. So what what should what is noble to do for a long period of time? I'll wait. What's noble to do for a long period of time? It's quiet. Nobody knows. Nobody has an answer to that. Nobody knows. What is noble to do for a long period of time? Boogie, what does that mean? <laughs> that is a boogie vision. That is, that is a random thing that you heard on Instagram. 
And I don't think that fits our class. Boogie. Run a business. What does that mean? What does that mean? And and that's the and that's the selling on IG and TikTok, I think. Run a business. What the fuck? What does it mean? Uh, 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 eliminate stand as a business. Yeah. Eliminate stand as a business. Running a business, and, and I think that's that's an, that's another thing right there, where we think success is running a business, and it is not. It isn't. It isn't. It isn't, bro. It, the success is not running a business. Do whatever your spirit is aligned with, whatever your passion is. I can't disagree with that. I can't disagree with that. Yeah, not everyone can run a business, true. Not everyone can run a business. I agree with that. But right now, we feel like that's the pinnacle of success, running a business. And I just feel like that's bullshit. It's bullshit, just something. We, it's the same way you hear, like, the young boys say on my shit, oh, invest your money. Okay, in what? And there's things you can invest in, but I just know the person telling you to invest your money, they don't know what you should invest in. They don't know. They just know that's what people say. They just know people say invest your stuff and it sounds smart, so they say it. So they just say it. That's a fact. I can't that that uh that yeah, that pandemic. All those pe- pandemic Dudes are out of here, man. The, the cryptocurrency dudes are out of here, too. They're gone, too. People don't even talk about crypto no more. Why about all the crypto channels? Which is ABA, That's, which is delusional, bro. Real estate is the best investment. Okay. Okay. Real estate's the best investment. That's not true, Big 1400. That's not true. Real estate will not always grow in time. If that, if, you know, they, they it falls too, man. It does bad too. Matter of fact, real estate is, is, um, going down as we speak. And and that's what I mean by people who, where you you hear what people say and they just you, you repeat it. Yeah, real estate is affected by supply and demand just like supply and 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 um by demand and supply just like everything else. If there's too many houses on the market and not enough people buying, the prices go down. You know, if the Fed messes up the money, the prices balloon to synthetic inflation. It's not, a, 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 you know, a silver bullet. Yeah. 
Yeah, see, never n- enough. That's a good thing. Yeah, that's that's that that right there is investing in you yourself. But no one ever says that. Never they they always come with something that they heard on a podcast somewhere where it's like, oh, invest in this, do this, invest in that, do this, and then you find out that those people are charlatans four years later, and what they've been investing in is telling you to invest in stuff. <laughs> it's like. Then, then what the hell, man? Yeah. So it's like, that's what I mean by, you know, I'm not saying that it can't be done. I'm not saying people don't make money doing those things. I'm just saying that those people wouldn't be in this live talking. I said it. They wouldn't be in these comments. You know, because it always goes back to class. If you have the ability to invest and make all this kind of money, you wouldn't even want to talk to us. That's the truth. You wouldn't even want to talk to us. What would you want to talk to us for? You'll be talking to people who have the money to in, in, invest in your uh, your thought process. Am I wrong? Our creative sales course, yeah. That's why I like just being one, you know, I'm just one of those people that prefer to just, I, I, I know where I sit, which is a better way of putting it. Hold on. Give me a second here. I know where I sit, and I don't try to act like I sit anywhere else. Which is what everybody wants to do. Everyone wants to act like, you know. I can say that. 